Hi, my name is Matthew Geiger, and I'm the Vice President of the Tennessee Chapter of the Percussive Arts Society, as well as the Director of Percussion Studies here at East Tennessee State University. Today I want to talk to you about practice habits and start a little mini-series on good practice techniques that you can use to improve the time you spend practicing. A lot of times we spend a lot of time in the practice room and it doesn't necessarily translate to great performances for other people, especially when we get nervous. Today I'm gonna to be using Mitchell Peters' Advanced Etude Number no. Five as an example to play along with. And at the very end, I'll play through the whole thing as I would normally do in a practice session once I'm done practicing and working on a specific chunk. I wanna cover three main topics today. The first that we've all heard, using a metronome. The second, is setting goals during your session before setting them and assessing how well you achieve them. And the third thing is providing yourself feedback or checking on what you've accomplished. And providing feedback is using recordings. Uh, setting goals is something you can do in the moment right before a rep, or you can take notes on a notepad. And using the metronome is um, what we heard all the time. Um, and yet a lot of us just don't do that. And sometimes it just seems like that's just not in the cards for us right now. I don't need to work on the metronome right now. I just need to run through this. Let's say I've got 15 minutes to practice something and I wanna make sure that those 15 minutes are, are used the best. And so I think, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just run through this and make sure I can get through most of it. So I start. and so on and so forth. And I continue to just make small mistakes and either I realize it or sometimes I don't even realize that I'm making those mistakes or I try and go back and fix those mistakes. The biggest problem with that is as percussionists, we rely a lot on muscle memory. And what we're teaching our muscles and our brain is that there are breaks here. There are times to stop playing and change something. And so instead of working on a really refined rep from the very beginning in small chunks and piecing that together, I'm trying to kind of sculpt the right answer out of marble. And okay, I'm gonna start with this big ugly chunk and I'm gonna go back and kind of refine little edges so that eventually it looks really good. That works with marble, it doesn't work with muscle memory in our brains. Sometimes we have really good reps and sometimes we do really bad things. And our brain is so smart that it's gonna store it all. Now, if we do enough good things, you can start to knock away the bad things so that we're just left with good reps. But a lot of times we don't practice enough and have enough time to really get out the bad reps. And rather, we just kind of, we start playing and hope that what we did um, goes really well. We hope that that last rep we had before we came into our lesson is what happens during the lesson. It's not often what happens. Instead, it's not the last rep that happens. It's the rep that you did three or four days ago that comes out during the lesson because you're nervous, you're playing for feedback, and you're playing in front of somebody who you really want to make a good impression for. And so it's important that we develop skills in the practice room that will help us make sure that when we play this for somebody else, we're going to have a better performance that more accurately represents what we did in the practice room. And so... Um, starting here with a metronome, I'm going to turn my metronome on. I use an app on my phone called Tempo. And one of the first things I want you to realize is I have the accent on every three beats. If I don't, I don't necessarily know where the downbeat is, which isn't a terrible thing, especially if the meter's changing. But for this etude, it stays in 3-4 the whole time, although where the accent is in the beat does change. And so I want to make sure that as I'm practicing, I know that I'm playing in 3-4. If you paid attention when I was making those mistakes, a couple bars were in 4-4 four, four on accident. And if I had my metronome even on, I may not have known that I was still adding a beat. And so I want to make sure that I land on a downbeat. 
So the second thing we're looking at here is setting goals in your practice session. Again, too often we just start running from the top and, and go until we make a mistake, and then we fix that mistake, then we keep going. And again, that might seem like we're doing a lot of you know, good things and eventually we'll get to the right finished product, but we're putting so many bad reps into our brain and our muscles that that might come out when we're nervous. And so instead, start the practice session with a specific goal in mind. Uh, for our purposes today, my goal is going to be I want to get really good at the first major phrase that I would consider. So let's take a look at the first five bars, which tend to be the first half of this phrase. And I'm going to practice that first five bars by itself and stop. And by stopping right there, I can make sure that I'm right on the downbeat, so I haven't added a beat or dropped a beat somewhere. And I'm gonna try again. Two reps in a row, and the goal is consistency. And so at this point, I have two options. I can keep moving forward, being happy with what I've learned so far, or I can continue to refine that phrase. It really depends on your time frame. So if I'm trying to play this, say, in an hour, I can't spend an hour on the first five bars. But if I'm trying to play this next week or for my next lesson, I might be able to spend more time and I might say, I really wanna work on just the first two bars. I want this to sound really good in the beginning. And so I'm going to just do the first two bars of that little mini phrase. I really want to work on consistency in my hands so that I get a good right and left hand balance. And once I start narrowing down, exactly what I like about what I'm doing, and I start fixing some of the things that I don't like, I wanna do that a whole bunch. But for now, we're talking about big picture. And my big picture was the first phrase. And so I've only done the first half, so I'm gonna go back and do the second half. Starting right where I left off. And for my purpose and what I'm trying to accomplish, which is connecting a lot of dots, I am going to always go to the next downbeat. That way I don't create a gap in my head so that when I'm performing, that gap shows up. And so I'll do that again. Working on dynamics, working on good roll speed, Good flams. Sticking to my goal, I'm not going to keep going forward, but rather I'm going to put all this together. So I can either go back to the beginning or I can work on the transition of the two parts. And so I'm going to actually focus on the transition because sometimes I kind of freak out when I do a big chunk and another big chunk together. So just two bars. I feel pretty confident that I can run from the beginning to the end of that phrase. So I'm going to try that now. I might do that again. So now without the mat. So 
So the third area that I want to talk about today is just checking your progress or providing feedback for yourself. A lot of times you're working with a private lessons instructor or a band director or somebody where you get their feedback once a week or maybe, uh, you know, if you're lucky, a couple times a week. However, um, as a practicing musician, you want to get that feedback as quickly and as often as possible. And so one of the best things you can do to get better and quick feedback is to record yourself, just kind of like what I'm doing right now. Um, you can use your phone, you can use higher end technology, um, but if you use a smartphone to record, obviously the sound quality isn't going to be as professional as possible. However, you're not looking to record to put something out there for other people. It's just for your own benefit. You can put it out there so that somebody else can watch. But if you want to get a good gauge of how well you are playing, you can watch yourself. And that way, while you're practicing, you're not in your own world uh, thinking about the mistakes you've made. You're thinking about what you can constantly be doing uh, to improve. And so that way you can go back and watch what you've done to uh, make some improvements in the next practice session. So with all of those things put together, you can start to make your practice sessions a little more efficient. It's not about practicing a bunch of hours, but rather using what little time you have to practice to make the most out of that time. So again, the three cores here, use a metronome, make sure that you're setting goals during the session, and then also provide yourself feedback. Find a way so that you can listen to what you've just done and assess that well before you go and play that for somebody else. Because other people's feedback is also really valuable, but a lot of time it's hard to get to. And if it's over Zoom or Google Meetings, it doesn't necessarily translate as well. And so your own feedback might be the most valuable thing you have right now. I hope this has been somewhat helpful for you, and I hope this gives you a few ideas of how you can practice a little better. In the next couple of videos, we'll talk about specific practice habits for working on one bar at a time to really refine and perfect something, as well as other metronome tricks and games you can play so that it's more interesting to work around time so that you're not depending on the metronome, but rather just using the metronome as a way to gauge whether or not you're playing in time.